we have one more night of cold weather and after that I think it'll be nice because we're gonna head south but today it'll be fun we're going to go to Montezuma's castle we're not in a hurry to leave here because it is still really cold John has overtaken his shower yes they have showers here um, included in the camping fee and uh, I'm gonna make some oatmeal and then we'll start taking down the rest of our thermal layers the randomness of our travel often leads to last minute detours on this day, it was a wrong turn that led us to a small town Christmas craft fair in Camp Verde, Arizona. We stopped to explore. One booth captured my immediate attention. It was a display of miniature kayaks used for hunting by native peoples in the coastal waters of the far north. It was an image that was burnished into my memory by my father, who in 1937 had volunteered for the Grenfell Association on Spotted Island in the Labrador. This picture was drawn by Sir Wilfred Grenfell on one of his visits with my grandparents. There is much more to the story of Dr. Grenfell and my father's summer adventures, which I will explore and share with you when we get to Newfoundland and the Labrador next summer. Montezuma Castle National Monument was established in 1909 and protects one of the best preserved cliff dwellings in North America. It was built and occupied by the Southern Sanagua people between 1100 and 1425 AD. Montezuma's Castle. Oh, I can see it. The main structure is five stories and housed 30 to 50 people in at least 20 rooms. Women busily preparing food. If you have time before you go there, take your phone, look up Sacred Mountains <laughs> at Arizona, because there's Sacred Mountains fun. everywhere, okay. and you'll see it's a new huge site. It's an incredible site. Mm -hmm. You go less than two miles, you'll see a sign that says Bell Trail. Pass it. You'll see a second sign that says Bell Trail, and that's where you go in. It will run three and a half miles along a creek, this same creek that's here, cross the creek, and three and a half miles back the other side. I'd suggest you turn around and come back instead of crossing the creek. Uh, there are the ruins of two Pueblos along there, as well as Petrogus. So this is why we don't make plans. <laughs> we now have complete plans, thanks to that very nice man, that very nice volunteer. So we're gonna go on a zoom as well, go see some petroglyphs, and maybe do a hike. I'm hearing it for the first <laughs> time too. <laughs> it is really cold today. Sure. Look at it. Not every day you see a big bull walking down the road. Uh, uh, spring fed sinkhole. Okay, prehistoric. Well, when the natives came along and saw it spilling into Beaver Creek, they turned it into an irrigation ditch that ran parallel to Beaver Creek uh, so they can farm both sides of the creek and both sides of the canal. Dogs on leash. Just 11 miles from Montezuma Castle is Montezuma Well National Monument a natural limestone sinkhole through which one and a half million gallons of water per day 
emerges from an underground spring at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. The water is highly carbonated and contains high levels of arsenic. The ruins of prehistoric dwellings built by the Sanagua people can be found around the rim of the well, and more than 50 rooms are found inside the park boundaries. The early inhabitants constructed canals to capture the water and irrigate their crops. Volunteer was right. This is neater than Montezuma's Castle oh, yeah. and fewer people. guy keeps following me. I don't know what to do about it. Should I report him? <laughs> Our son says his vest is geriatric green. Does that... <laughs> what do you think? It helps me find him in a crowd. Our next site is the, I guess it's called V Bar V, and it is the petroglyph site. They close at 3 p.m. and they're only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So this really is the better of the two, Montezuma Castle versus Montezuma. Well, obviously you should do two, especially if you have the park pass. This one is a free entrance and you're limited though. If you have an RV that's, you know, very long, you, you really can't come up here. But a van, something that's like 24 feet, there's a little bit of parking on the side of the road that could work for you. Otherwise you need to be a regular vehicle. So to get to the petroglyphs, it's a dirt road. So when you come out of the Montezuma well, you make a right on the dirt road and it's about three or four miles down. V Bar V Heritage Site, okay. The V Bar V Heritage Site was acquired by the Coconino National Forest in 1994. 
It is the largest petroglyph site in central Arizona and one of the best preserved, consisting of over a thousand petroglyphs on 13 panels. Full-time volunteers live on site and provide interpretive tours of the site. We're continuously going, so you'll catch up when I start again. Thank you. So they turn the rock, it turns the rock face black. It takes about 10,000 years, especially in a climate like this, and where this rock face only gets sun on it in the afternoon. It's quarter after two, and we still don't have sun down, down here. So it takes about 10,000 years to get a millimeter. That's about what we have. Your desert varnish on here? No. Look down here. There's a little bit of desert varnish. And that was a clue to archaeology, our, our archaeology. When we got the property in 1990, they put a scaffold up. And the archaeologist could see vertical scratches. He could tell that all the desert varnish was scraped off of that stuff. He could also tell, you may not be able to see the leading edge from where you're sitting, but that leading edge right there has is rippled. It's wavy. That's man-made. That's man-made. There's flake marks on there, like when they make an arrowhead. He also could tell that that stone was taken and leaned out of the crevice about four or five inches, and that capstone, which is not natural, was put back there to keep it from falling back in. Shaman went through a lot of trouble. Only the shaman could do anything on that wood. Shaman went through a lot of trouble to have something happen every afternoon at about three o'clock, and that's what happened. About it, you get you get the sun shining on the rock, and you get a shadow, and you get that shadow. Can you see that? How do you know that the shaman wanted the shadow the way it looks at three o'clock, and not the way it looks at two o'clock, or some other time of day? I said you're exactly right. How do you know? Because at three o'clock. The shadow looks like an arm coming out with three fingers sticking out like that, and it's and it's right over here. Instead of being up in there. Indisputable fact, the stone was worked, was engineered by someone to get a particular shadow in a particular shape at a certain time of day. What exactly it was all about, we have no way of knowing. We had a great day today. We saw Montezuma's Castle, Montezuma's Well, the V Bar V petroglyphs, and now we have found a great spot to spend the night at a RV resort called, uh, what's it called, John? V, what's this place called? Distant Drums. Distant Drums RV Resort, right off of I-17. It's actually quite nice. They even have a swimming pool, laundry, showers, all the stuff you expect in an RV resort. And the spaces are pretty well spaced apart. So we're happy and I'm gonna call this a wrap for this week. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna to start heading south into lower Arizona. <laughs> Next time just throw off on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs>